the previous group uh, computes that that you had, and it's gonna only stay for today because from tomorrow on you will still log in. You know, you, there's nothing you will change, but the, you don't need GPU, so there will not be any GPU in that. So the machines will change, but you will not notice. All you notice is that your software, blah, blah, that you installed will not be there. So what I am going to allow you today is basically by going into your previous uh, compute machine, if you haven't done already, um, basically, you know, git commit things or, you know, whatever, just save it and things that you don't need, delete, because um, and especially things you really want, it should be only model, not data. Everything that you can get outside, don't don't save it, but basically make it just in your uh, S3 space, you know, in the notebook space. Basically, put it, don't delete, because anything else that that is not in the do, not delete, I will delete it. So if you need it for at some point, like a, an output of a model that you couldn't download, whatever, just put it there so that I don't delete it. Okay. So I will give you a, basically, I will send saying the machines are up. By that time, when you just do SSH as usual, you will log in and you will find the same thing that you had before and it will have also GPU for now. But um, at, I will just communicate with you as well. Uh, just some time today, I will switch off and then I will uh, instantiate actually a GPU-less uh, compute with slightly more memory and more uh, also processors so that everyone can basically, because this is an individual work, everyone will be able to work on their own. So you don't have to coordinate. So there will be, instead of eight CPUs, there, there will be 18, uh, 16 CPUs. Um, and, and RAM will be also somewhere like, I think 64 or 32, I'll just see. So that would be like enough space for you to work um, uh, as the same group. So you don't change anything uh, per se. But it's not a group work, it's just only for computing, for sharing computes. No, it's okay. Okay, so this this week, you really will be looking at um, an, actually a problem that was contributed by a US agriculture, uh, Agritech. It's a very, one of the large, one of the largest they raised recently, something like, uh, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 800 million or close to a billion, um, uh, very a lot, maybe 200, I don't know. But they, they, they really are working on these new advanced techniques to for fertilizers. So basically, uh, water, you know, plants need water as well as uh, nitrogen. And so they basically, uh, their main uh, nitrogen, basically when you do, when you think of fertilizers, you're thinking of nitrogen. So their new genetically modified thing is that it actually don't need you don't need um, fertilizer, but you actually are modifying the crop itself so that it synthesizes kind of you add a certain bacteria relationship such that it synthesizes its fertilizer. So it's basically a genetic modification of a crop to synthesize to uptake uh nitrogen from the air and through some kind of bacteria so it's really you know cutting edge agriculture but one of the things they want to of course they know is that it affects is that water distribution in your land really uh, increase or decrease your yield okay so what they want to know is by looking at some kind of three-dimensional satellite and you know um uh, drone or some other flying uh, operations they want to determine the slope it's very important critically to determine the slope and the baseline so that when they test for example whether their genetic engineering uh, makes it is improved or not you know it's not because one part water is excess another part you know how water flows even if you it, you know you give it every day water but how water flows means some parts will get more water than others right so LIDAR, this is a technique that basically is um, collecting points in space, in three-dimensional space. And LIDAR can be used for mapping anything, including, of course, in this case, uh, this. 
but it's uh, it's also can be used even in game. You know, like when, uh, for example, self-driving cars, they use LiDAR because they need to construct their entire space as three-dimensional and they have to sample that. And so they basically collect points in three dimension. So LiDAR is used in a number of, in games, because you have to render, uh, you have to, you know, you would use it in self-driving because you have to, you know, you have to capture and as well as also um, in agriculture for, in this case, for example, for mapping the water distribution and others, okay? So um, I think by then, now when you read this business niche, you will know what exactly I'm describing. So what they are requesting is a Python package. So at the end, they want a Python package that would really make their life simpler in terms of working with, with um, this data. So this is a very, very, as you can imagine, very big data that is shared in the US by a USGC. So it's a kind of uh, an organization that releases really high resolution LiDAR data uh, for use and it's shared with the Amazon uh, S3, but they wanna be able to, in their analysis, they wanna be able to use it, but they want a Python package that they can install and that will do exactly, you know, make it convenient for them to work with this public data, okay? So what, you know, so basically one important gradient to understanding water flow in a field is by measuring the elevation of the field at many points. And the USGS uh, recently uh, high resolution elevated data as a LiDAR point cloud called USGS 3DAP in a public data set on Amazon. This data set is essential to build models of water flow and predict plant health and maize harvest. You know, you work at an agri-tech, so that's the kind of the context which has a mix of domain experts data. I mean, this is really exactly what some of three of our former graduates, batch four, two of our batch four graduates are working there. It's a very uh, competitive domain and very also well paid. So you work uh, like that and data science data engineers are part of the data engineering team. Your task to produce an easy to use, a reliable and well-designed Python module that domain experts think, you know, that basically scientists uh, can use to fetch, visualize, and transform this publicly available satellite and LiDAR data. In particular, your code should interface with US, USGS 3D uh, and fetch data using their API, okay? And also, if you are uh, kind of finished that, you are also allowed, you, we also ask you actually to also run, write, fetch some other data satellite data that can be interfaced with that to check, okay? So the quality of your Python package is judged by how easy it is to install and use. Definitely that you should have, if you can, should have both installable as PIP, as well as also just basically, you know, as Docker in, in case someone really doesn't like to install everything and create in all that form, but everything is self-sufficient how much abstraction it exposes from high level. So basically just, you know, a few endpoints saying like, okay, get me just this data versus, you know, an ability to, to just uh, expose many methods in a class, for example, or some kind of subclassing and stuff. So should they, can they extend it, for example, your code by subclassing it? So you can, you know, as a mix in it's called, or um, yeah. So a few function calls and then, also, of course, high level abstraction means by knowing, by chaining multiple things, you can actually really make it very simple. Just a one line code using a chain, let's say dot that, dot that, dot that, would actually, by taking, for example, one of the method, uh, the output of the other one, by doing that, you can actually do a number of things. You know, in scikit, usually there is, you know, some, some of those tools have that. So that's the kind of like how you abstract, how you kind of expose. And then of course, CPU and RAM usage. So in that case means, are you installing, are you working on parallel? Are you making it, for example, um, do you use OpenMP, some kind of uh, session or multi-processing or trades, you know, for downloads. So all of this, like for example, are you using asynchronous computing? Um, so can you implement a sync IO, for example, in your code. So that's that's the kind of like uh, which that means sometimes it will really make it 
faster to download if you're using sockets for example and trades to download data it might get easier and then also when you are kind of um, uh, making your code not just repetitive but save space then your RAM will be also saved so you know how much is that and then implementation of exactly what I said parallelization to speed up fetching loading transforming okay you may not have time to implement all of these elements but you should write you know you should basically work first and then one go and then kind of add certain features and so basically just like everything else is as before okay um and so this is the same it is an individual work you know and the points are mentioned here i think your interim report will be overview of lidar and satellite data formats because these are new we are probably haven't worked with some of you haven't worked with before and discussions of use tools to access and load LiDAR data and code flow diagram and report of what is uh, completed. Okay, so that's the entry and the final is basically we expect you to write as usual um, some medium article. And this in particular, you should also generate documentation given that you are now passing your, your code to um, you know some domain experts they want to be able to check what to search and and refer so there needs to be code documentation so we ask you also to a pdf of your code documentation for example using phoenix but you are not only just phoenix if you if you want to use something else you can also use just um, some other tool to generate documentation to your code basically that documentation shows like all the tool tips all the kind of documentation that you have either handwritten or you know generated of course with phoenix will just generate from your code but in phoenix you can add description for example uh, in your code that is, that will make it so simple examples for example in your code that will make the documentation really easy just like as you see documentations for um for pandas or anything you know pandas documentation is generated like that it's nothing different so you you should follow something like that and i think the rest you would basically again in the technical sense the GitLib, the github link submission has this and then also the final submission has that okay instructions are basically so first is you will interact with a public api that with that we provided and know how to use it you already have been interacting with apis so this should be easy um create tools that that can be used to interact with api in a more user-friendly and effective manner so basically just means codes um you know basically just functions and classes you know in other mixings and then visualize the geospatial data returned so basically use an appropriate visualizer uh, so basically integrate it with something that is more useful and important there are a number of them so i would say um high v's or it's called data shader or I think it's actually called high vs uh, It's actually whole of view. So it is, I think. So this one should have it's basically is integrated all of the It should have all of the, including Holovy's data shader. Um,
So this is the one. Um, so I think this should be. Yeah, I think this is the one I'm referring. This one should have a lot of all of the tools that you know you can think of. So basically, um, it 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 has matplotlib, but also it has you know it basically wraps around different um, so different elements. So this is basically how Python visualizations happen. So there are three basic tools that are that are used one is matplotlib things based on matplotlib things uh, basically packages that are based javascript and then opengl and interaction with them so it's basically hollow views which is really considered one of the really um, for really high volume basically billions of points if you want to plot then you would use those kind of things and data shader and and hollow view are like that so it's basically um, Hall of views basically would give you yeah so this would allow you to plot really such a map so you know the especially data shader you can really these are billions and billions of points that you can visualize like that so i'm just going to also give reference to that you can use some of them basically pyvs wraps all all that so that's the thing yeah and ensure the package is documented in a way that follows usage and understanding right so basically have that and the workflow basically as usual read the instruction plan your work and really plan your work is an essential component that's why we keep always asking it and don't it shouldn't be an afterthought what really i'm noticing a lot of people planning and describing they really think of it as just the minimal thing just only that they will do when they are writing their interim submission you will never grow with that mentality plan must be an important component that you really take time so without it it's really not gonna you're not gonna grow so really take time an afternoon at least to plan and read understand um, the project it will really simplify a lot of your like basically read read and plan you know plan means like you just oh i don't understand this so you read whatever and then you have clarity and any kind of plan so it's really i would say mondays should be spent reading thinking and planning and then you should have basically by you know midday tuesday you should have clarity okay how you're gonna approach it and and how things what are things that you're kind of implementing at least the basic idea and then after that you would you would fill the gap okay and explore the data set up github repo which is the usual request okay and then the first is data fetching and loading so basically that description tells you what kind of what is really required you know it's uh, input boundary these are like uh, the part so these are geo pandas uh, data frame so actually points uh, you know th this when you come into this satellite spaces and you know things you basically are working on geometry figures because it could be a circle, you know, a plot, a, some kind of like an agriculture, a farm is described by some form of point coordinates, right? So coordinates, the coordinate one, coordinate two, three, four, five. So this is one row in this called GeoPandas data frame. This describes basically just one patch, one geometry. And, um, and then inside it, of course, is basically uh, output elevations are given using that's what's called lidar okay so that's basically you would understand from this and we'll try so this is basically um what it is and also because each year like you you're probably mapping things so you have a year um so you it's gonna be a kind of dictionary so for this year this type of points this point of points this point of points like that okay so it, it tells you basically then when you transform it, output geo pandas would be exactly this is what I'm describing. You know, this is elevation in meter and then a geometry uh, at that point. So that basically it's a point geometry 
in this case, this is describing one point here, right? If it was, uh, if instead of point, if it was polygon, then it would be, of course, uh, a collection of them. So basically, a collection uh, of points, then it would form the kind of geometry. So that's a kind of type of data. And then basically, when you visualize it, you basically visualize it with this kind of way, okay? And in task two is uh, visualization, and task three is actually that you want actually to transform it into some kind of, let's say, what you had was elevation, now you want to turn it into something else. And so you might uh, convert it into, for example, topographic with a uh, wetness index or soil quality or something using kind of some form of uh, formulas or some form of other data by mixing it with other data and all that, okay? And the thing is, because points are selected randomly, probably through observation, but this is not good most of the time. So we need to regrid it. And regreading means taking this and basically interpolating it into a very uh, grid that's kind of uniform. And, and then when you do regrid, then there are two parameters, of course, the resolution you are regreding. And, and that basically defines, just like any picture, you know, how, how much can you access, basically, the, the separation between. And you have to, we specify, it should just be in five meters. That's the, at least like one of the inter, in, in uh, regreading, like you should produce it in five meters, but, you know, this could be variable into your code. Okay. And then bonus tasks are, of course, to bring U.S. soil data use, uh, from another uh, API and then visualize that, integrate with the, with the basically the LiDAR data, that, that is your main priority. Another one is to actually also bring satellite data, uh, which would tell you in RGB or in some, for example, Sentinel, uh, which is a European Space Agency one, has 12, you know, 12 even channels that even detect some kind of infrared and others, right? So that's another one. And then another one is basically to, to get climate data based on geometries. And that one will also just tell you, for example, about availability of rain or any other thing. So this is just your, your code can wrap around also to bring data, visualize this on top of each other. Okay, so you can use um, basically for your package, you should just really provide some kind of quick start guide. You know, how should they use, how should they interact? So basically you are producing a, a Python package you really check Python package that you really found it easy. Flask, for example, you know, it's a package, right? It, it gives you quick starts. So basically follow a standard guideline in such a way that people can just come in and really start using easily. And so here are notes and, ref and tutorials and, and there will be tutorials uh, also by former, hopefully by former, but by people who was in batch four now working for the same company it's called uh, pivot bio uh, us company so they will also they will be also on wednesday um i think there will be also a talk by by them to give you the context and the topic okay and i think that's it all of the standard ones as well as just references that you might you might need and really we give you a number of references so you should start here and you have much of the most important references are here so start from that okay any question Vinian. thank you Yabubal, for the uh, review uh, so uh, when we create the python package uh, uh, do we need to make it uh, installable with with pip yeah or is it another option okay yeah, Docker is one, right? So you can allow people to use it in as a form of Docker. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Also, you can put it as part of Honda if you want, depending on what you are. But, you know, writing up or making it a PIP and trying to submit it to be installable from PIP, you might, you know, that's another one. But again, it's also, even if it's not installable, just directly peep something. That means you don't put it in a register. But if it is in Git, you know, you can install uh, just from Git using peep, right? It's okay. 
Okay, so it's not necessary to put it in the PIP registry. Um, I mean, try it. It's good practice, but it's not. It's not necessary. So it's like deployment. We always just encourage you to deploy it somewhere to get used to the habit. But it's not a major thing. As long as you write the code, the code is in GitHub. It's uh, Yeah, that's okay. great. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. So, um, so what I would do for for some of you who have changed your computer, so what we need is if you could, if someone can help me, just as before, maybe the people who uh, helped me last time to organize in each of the group, like as before, that kind of, the kind of the week four, uh, if you could send me really a format that basically is a folder you know group uh, all of the chains in your group okay. so group the, the question mark is for one group one or group two or something and then name like the name that you were using really just that must be uh, important and then basically 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 what i want is group like that the name and all names should be small letters as usual and then like that so if you if you kind of if in per each group if you send me even if like that person is not willing now to send you because in some of the groups some people may have left just send me in any representative just from the kind of the week four group just build on that group for and whoever has changed it. I mean, if you haven't changed it, your key or whatever, don't worry. But if you have changed it, just send me all of the changes under that. And now it will be super easy for me. Okay. Great. I am also just posting this in Slack just so that I've Anything else? Any other question? If not, have a lovely day. Cheers, guys. Bye.